modern times, lots of photographers, both beginning and advanced, struggle to create great outdoor images that evoke emotion. I'm talking about outdoor images with that wow factor, both visual and emotional. Images that silently tell deeper stories of people and humanity at large. Narratives that go beyond clothes that people are wearing at a particular moment. Despite the abundance of equipment, tools, information at our disposal as photographers, many of us still create images that don't make us any different from Uncle James, who owns an iPad. Today, Oscar Tege unveils the top eight things beyond equipment that will make those outdoor images of yours stand out. One. Find the light. Yes, seek the light. One of the old photography masters defined photography as drawing using light. The most important decision you will ever make as a photographer is finding places with beautiful lighting. Consider places where the lighting flatters people's faces. I don't care how beautiful a location is, for as long as the lighting in that particular location is bad, avoid, 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 avoid such locations. Unless you're going to artificially light that particular location. Look for places with shade. If there is no shade, consider facing your subjects away from the sun. This will leave the faces of your subjects in shade that flatters the faces even better. Look at these as creative shadows. The sun is coming in this direction, so I'm having this face the opposite direction of the sun. Basically, the sun is leaking out from the back. When you look at her, she is, uh, the sun that is leaking out of the back. Perfect it in camera. The best thing, the best images you will ever get out of that editing software are those that were perfectly done in camera. Many photographers shoot with that kind of mindset of we shall fix it in post. Well, I'm guilty of that too. Back in the day, I cared less about what I showed on set because I was so good at post-production, but this would take me hours and hours on computer fixing issues that would have otherwise taken just a few seconds to fix on set. I, I took me a lot of time to break this bad habit. When I stopped doing weddings, a friend of mine called Jeff invited me to do to be an art director on one of his wedding sets. All I did on these particular sets was evoke emotion and pose people. He, then he would do the actual shooting. The style Jeff shoots in is a bit minimalist and he usually does very little retouching on his images. Jeff is one of those photographers that do not want, that do not like editing or spending a lot of time in Photoshop. His style basically compels him to perfect shots in camera right from composition, light and emotion. His shots are so perfect in that you can print these JPEGs there and then and deliver. The more shoots I did with Jeff, the more I adapted a piece of his style. Actually, he would tell me, Oscar, we have to perfect this here. No Photoshop, no nothing. He would not leave a scene unless we had perfected the shots with no distractions.
Learning this from Jeff saved me hours and hours of putting things right in Photoshop. Oh, by the way, you can check out his Instagram page. I'll leave the link of his Instagram in the description below. You should go check out his work. I guess some of you minimalists would love his style. Choose the right lens that defines your style. Are you the kind that wants blurry backgrounds? Those photos with the bouquet or prefer to have a lifestyle kind of feel, yeah, with everything in focus? Whatever your style you choose, learn about it, get more knowledge about it, and master it. I mean, you don't want to have some images having blurry background and others having everything in focus or with a lifestyle look. You want to have consistent style of images. Timing, timing, timing is key. Shade your shoots when the light is at its best. The goal is to have quality light that is soft. Soft light flatters the face better. If you choose to do the portraits, for example, at midday, you will end up having your people looking like King Julian. If you, you've watched Madagascar, you know those raccoon eyes. You either shoot very early in the morning or shoot late in the evenings because naturally the light at that time of the day is usually softer and flatters the subjects very, very, very well. Five. The other thing I would want you to put in mind is called scrapbooking. Really, this is not done on set, but it is done before. Basically, what scrapbooking is, is you putting together beautiful things with potential of triggering some inspiration within you. This range from photos, textures, prints. However, as photographers, our scrapbooks can include beautiful images done by other photographers for just inspiration. They can also include illustrations, digital paintings, and many, many other things that can trigger inspiration. With apps like Pinterest, you can create boards of your photo inspiration. The goal of this is not to do reproductions of what other photographers have done, but to get something unique, but deriving inspiration from those beautiful pieces. As a creative portrait photographer, there are times I freeze where you try to look for ideas and your brain just can't generate any. These are times when I when the creative juices are really running low. Your scrapbook may be your savior. All those boards in Pinterest can spark lots and lots of inspiration within you. Collect those beautiful inspirational pieces through time. Make it part of you. Trust me, doing this for months will help you get an overflow of creative juices courtesy of the compounding effect. Hope that really makes sense. Prepare yourself for the unexpected. You should always assume that things may not go as planned. I remember back in uh, 2007, when I was a beginner photographer, my mentor always carried an analog camera loaded with film. This was the time when digital photography had not really taken off so well in Uganda. The technology seemed to be so new that most Ugandan photographers always had an analog SLR just as backup. Of course, just in case digital technology decided to go bazaar. On this particular day, we were shooting at a petrol station. And as he was shooting, just out of the blue, his camera, which was a Canon 
350D then showed a screen error. He tried removing the lens, cleaned it and placed it back on the camera. And the camera was still saying error 99 every time he pressed the trigger. He tried changing lenses, but the camera was still showing the same thing. He also tried removing the batteries. Still, nothing could help change the mind of the camera. The only option he had was to get out his film gear, his analog camera, and shoot the project. This taught me one thing. Always have extra accessories, extra memory cards, wipes, gaffer step, safety pins in case there is a wardrobe malfunction, umbrellas in case it rains. Basically, double up. Double up everything. Keep some of that stuff in your camera bag in case the day turns out not to be so good. Yes, I know you're supposed to be positive, but that is why we have insurance companies despite the positivity all around us. Seven. Be part of the styling process. As photographers, we double as artists. Equipping yourself with uh, some knowledge on styling fashion will make you exceptional. I mean, guide your clients on what to wear. You want them to wear clothes that will work well with particular background and also complement the suggested themes. What I usually do, I ask a customer to go onto my Instagram page, send me at least three of her favorite images that I've shot. This in a way helps me gauge the style and taste of this person. These images help me sink deeper into her personality. After this, I go into my scrapbook and in that folder of inspirational images on my phone gallery, I pick out pictures or images that really suit that particular client, then create a mood board and share it with her. I suggest changes in terms of color, composition, styling. We set dates and then shoot. Basically, it is a team effort. It is this little extra effort that separates masterpieces and common pieces. Besides, the time spent together with the customer builds a bond or a friendship that makes it even easier for you, the photographer, on the day of the shoot. It is this relationship that makes it feel like you are photographing not just a customer but your friend, which will definitely get you more great images with character. This brings me to my number eight. Make the photo shoot fun. Yes, make it fun. When people see these beautiful smiley images of people on the internet, they expect photo shoots to be fun. But if you have been on any kind of photo shoot, most people are disappointed. It turns out to be that most of these photo shoots are tiring and boring. Too bad most of the photographers are too technical. They speak aperture, shutter speed, that kind of techy language to their customers. You know the kind of photographers that shoot and stare at the back of their screen for over a minute as a person they are shooting stands, getting more tense, even getting more nervous, just looking at them, wondering what the photographer is doing. Some would even go ahead and tell the customer how the lighting is acting bad. 
you know they would treat ordinary people like the way they would treat models they forget that they are not shooting models but ordinary people unless you are shooting models or actors who can morph into characters at any time my dear you should learn people skills portrait photography in my opinion is 90 percent people skills and 10 percent technical the same photographers with bad people skills will complain how the guy the woman hated taking pictures dude you made the experience so boring this could explain why that mediocre photographer seems to take away all your customers because of one major thing the mediocre photographer is fun on set he sells human experiences and you are selling technical stuff i mean as a photographer i know you're very technical but again still be a human being if you've enjoyed this video and have learned really something new in the comments below comment with yes and i would see you in my next video don't forget to hit the subscribe button